Hello there. In this video extract from our proofreading workshop, I discuss some tips that can help you with proofreading effectively. If you find this helpful, we have more useful workshop extracts on our YouTube channel, Darby Uni Library, as well as other audio and video content. So, uh, now that we've discussed different methods for proofreading, we're now going to discuss, talk about some advice and how you can make those methods as effective as possible. So, before I start giving my advice, I was wondering if you have any tips or tricks for proofreading. If you do, then feel free to write them into the chat. And at the end of my tips, I'll see, I'll read out some, Amy will read out some of the tips that have been shared. So, have you got any tips for proofreading? Because everyone does proofreading a little bit differently. My first tip, all about having fresh eyes. So, what I mean by having fresh eyes is essentially leaving a gap between when you finish writing and when you stop proofreading. So then you almost forget a little bit about what you've written. And the reason why I say this is because have you ever, when you get your results back, um, you turn it in quite often, you ever look at your work and notice some errors and think, how did I make that error? Like I've read this like 10 times, how, have I, how has it slipped through the cracks? That's happened to me quite a few times after. So a way to avoid this happening is to read it with fresh eyes. So read it when there's some time has passed between you writing your assignment. I'm not saying that you have to do nothing in that time. Uh, I know some people who I work with do say you don't have to do anything in that time. If you're very busy, do other things. Just forget about the essay that you've written there. You can if you want do the referencing there. Although, again, leave time between then checking your references. Having fresh eyes is really, really good for helping you to spot the mistakes. And depending on how long you've got, depends on how long you can give yourself. But well, I'd say at least a day or at least an evening has passed. But I would try to put at least two or three days in there. Uh, something else which can help with fresh eyes is if you might not have the time, you can ask someone who is not on your course and doesn't really have any subject knowledge have a look at your essay. So it's controversial, slightly controversial on the basis that you've got to avoid plagiarism with doing this and both you plagiarising and someone plagiarising off your work. So it is possible to have someone else look at your work. However, I would, I would thoroughly recommend not having someone on the same course uh, to do it because either they could influence the type of ideas that you've written on your paper or they could steal your ideas. And that is when you could get done for plagiarism for something that you might not have done. So you need to cover your back there is my advice. And if you do have your friend look at it, have them look at a specific element of them. Ask them, does it make sense? Do you understand it? Is it clear that I've answered the question? Can you spot any spelling, punctuation uh, and grammar issues, for example? Those type of things. Are there any words you don't understand? Because those fresh eyes can help you. The second piece of advice that I have is to plan time for proofreading. And this is very similar to having fresh eyes. So why the reason why I'd recommend having um, planning some time is, is because with proofreading being as thorough as I've said it is, if you then proof it and then you've only got a day before submission, You've not actually got the time to make the changes that you spotted. So it's all great saying, oh, I found all these weaknesses in my essay. And what um, if you've not actually got the time to enact those changes and to make your work better? There's almost no point in spending all the time proofreading. So plan time in after you finish proofreading. So I would always plan or try to finish. Well, I've always said I tried to finish writing my essay a week before the deadline. What I mean by that is I finish proofreading the essay. And that way I have time for both emergencies and to make any urgent changes because you might spot when you've proofread, when you've proofread, your work none of it answers the question. You need to do loads more research and rewrite a lot of things. That's not a bad thing. That's a great thing if you spot that, because then all of a sudden you've gone from submitting something which is not going to answer the question to submitting something which is far better and will get you far more marks. But just make sure you plan time in so that you actually can make those changes. 
So on the right hand side, I've shown a photo of an example essay, um, which isn't mine, but the author has given me the permission to use it for this. And they said this is what they do. And this is the proofreading that they've done on some of their essays. Um, that essay there, the entire thing looks like that. Um, the entire thing looked like this with red bits here, changes there, lots of little errors and things that they spotted. That essay that I showed on screen just had a ton of changes and errors in it um, that were made. And that essay actually got 90% and the entire thing looked like that. Um, so when you write your first assignment, your first draft assignment, try to always think that it doesn't need to be perfect. You just need to get the ideas out in the format that you want and then you could tweak it and make it better and make it as good as it can be in the proofread. And so I was focused on just getting the content out, getting it all done, and then fixing it all in the edit to be perfect. Obviously, in the structure, you need the research there in, in place, but the writing part doesn't take as long as the proofreading can. So don't focus on making your first draft perfect. Focus on perfecting the, in the edit. So now that we've discussed the fact that uh, my tips for proofreading, Amy, would you want to do a, give a summary of the tips that students have given in the chat? Yeah, so um, we uh, got get someone else to read your essay. Um, so that was a really, really good one. Um, and like you said, it's always good to get somebody to read it who has no prior knowledge. Um, and then that also um, well, if they understand it, then it shows that you are writing really, really clearly um, and really, you know, to the point, which is um, which is really important. So, um, yes, that's a good one. And then we've got one from Zoe, which I've not thought of before. Um, change the font size, type and colour. Um, you know what you know what's there already, but changing what it looks like can help you spot things that are wrong. Uh, I haven't thought about that one before, but that's actually a really good idea. Um, and then we've got from Erin, reread the day after. Um, so, yeah, that's a, a, another really, it's really important to um, step away from the essay and um, look back at the next day with, with fresh eyes, definitely. Um, yeah, and Zoe mentioned that you can tweak um, the spelling, grammar, check in, in Word. So, yeah, there's a function in Word where you can check for things like contractions. Um, um, yeah, so that's an overview, I think. Cool. So thank you very much for your tips.